All right, there we go. Hello, hello, John S. Rhodes here of the Rhodes Brothers, and welcome to Greater Wealth Through Mastery. And the topic of today's short talk is all about Elon Musk and his delegation secrets. And this very much applies to the many companies that he runs. But more importantly, these lessons from Elon Musk can apply to you in your life and especially if you happen to have a business and you have people that report to you. Now, if you're in a company working for someone else, maybe you're a manager, you have some kind of authority or you have supervision over individuals in any situation at all, this is for you. And I'm gonna walk through five levels of delegation. So this is what Elon Musk does. Now we're gonna start with one and then go to two, three, and four, of course, and then number five, which is where the pay dirt is for you. It's important that you stick with me through the entire video so that it makes sense because these things build upon each other. I hope that makes sense. If you just go to number five immediately, you will not get the full value. I will give you number five immediately, however, anyway, right now. And what that is is acting independently. In other words, you allow people, you tell people, you encourage people to act independently. But again, if you click off now, you will not get the full value of the video. So let's get started with number one or level one, which is very, very authoritarian. What that really comes down to is you tell someone what to do. You tell people exactly what to do and importantly, how to do it. It is the do as I say mode of delegation. And you're hardly delegating at all. You're basically saying, follow my instructions, follow my directions exactly as I'm saying them. I've already figured everything out. I already know how to do everything. You're just going to replicate what I've done. The course of action to take is going to be the course of action that I have already figured out. So that's level one. Do as I say. Level number two is research and report. So the idea there is that you have the person that you're delegating to. You say, hey, look, go research this topic, gather relevant information, and then provide me, the decision maker, with the materials. And a lot of times you can sort of candy coat it and you can say, hey, we'll review the details together. And then I'll decide on the next steps. Again, you are the authoritarian at the end of the day, but you involve the other person in the task of kind of getting involved with the topic because you're saying, hey, go do some research. Obviously, level two is more advanced than level one. Okay, but ultimately you're making the decision. It's the life or death. It's the black or white. You're the one that's that's doing that. Level three is research and recommend. Now this seems very advanced because what you're doing is you're having the other person or other people investigate or research the topic again. And they're looking at all the, the details, all of the various options. And the important part is that they're also going to explain their reasoning. They're going to tell you or he or she, they're going to tell you exactly the pros and cons of the possible decisions that could be made. And importantly, they're not only doing the research and coming up with the pros and cons and having something of an, of an opinion about it, but they are, they are also providing their ultimate recommendation on the course of action to take. And you may or may not agree. If you agree, then you tell them to you know go forth and prosper and make the most of the de decision. And if not, obviously you, you know kick them back to doing more research or you just tell them what to do because for whatever reason you don't agree. But it's, it's critical here that they are doing the research. They have ownership and involvement to a degree. Pros and cons is a good way of sort of thinking about that. They're giving you the details and they're recommending and then you decide yes or no. Like I said, this is this is rather advanced. Many people are in 
level one or level two. They're just like, do it my way or the highway. This is the way that it's done. Or like milita militaristic, this is a command. You must do this. So that's like level one. That's just them being uh, drones, not even clones. They're just being drones and robots and following along. And I'm sure you've been in situations like that. And level two is, yeah, they're more involved, but they're just researching and passing along the information to you to process and think about and and then you come up with the pros and cons. But see, level three is like active involvement. They are thinking, they are providing pros and cons. And it might be very extensive. It might be a research report. It might be a presentation. And even at the conclusion of that that research report or that recommendation uh, on a like a, a PowerPoint, right? They've done a slide presentation or a long email. It can be done that way as well. They're saying we recommend or I recommend this course of action based on my research and based on all the pros and cons. Here's what I recommend. But that's only level three. Now, remember, I've already given you level five right from the get go. But you can see why it's so important to understand the level of involvement from the people under your control, under your supervision, um, those who are working with you, those who are working for you, you start to understand that the, the hierarchy is still there, but it flattens out. Do you see? It's still, it's, it's flattening out. Instead of like command and control, which is like level one, bleeding into level two, we're going from being very, very, uh, very, very much like a pyramid to a much flatter pyramid. Again, we're at number three, which is the research and recommend. Now, level four is where some really interesting things happen. It's it's where you are telling people to do everything. So they're, they're doing the research. They are telling you what they found, their summary of findings. They're giving you the pros and cons. And then they actually have the power to decide on what they're recommending. So it's gonna be pretty obvious that if they've given themselves what amounts to a garden path, they're going to take that path and they are authorized to take that path. Now this sounds like what could be more, you know, what could be better than that? Because if you think about it, they've done all the work, all the thinking, all the arrangement, and you're sort of along for the ride but not quite. You see, what the difference is here is that you inject yourself. Again, this is level four. You inject yourself as a final authority. You inject yourself in such a way where you require periodic updates. Like, hey, once a week, give me, a, give me an update. Tell me what's going on. And if you think about that, that will always mean that they will defer to you and they will always be thinking about what they need to say and to do to please you, to please you, right? They're always going to cover things up a little bit. They're always going to massage things a little bit. They're going to do what they need to do just enough so that you don't put your nose in it, so that you don't put your thumb down on it, so that you are not personally involved. They're going to do that. Now, is it going to happen immediately? No. But if there are errors and issues along the way, instead of doing what's required to course correct for the sake of the project or the sake of the product, instead what they'll do is cover it over. They'll paper it over. So it looks great for a long time. Now, like I said, this is insidious. It's like a trap because level one, two, and three, it's kind of baked in that you will be involved and they know it and it's very, you know, there's more structure. But when you give them the authority to take action based on their own recommendations, but you're just barely there on the periphery, they'll always remember that you are the boss and they'll do what they need to do because they have to periodically update you. So this is one of the trickiest, you know, black holes because, or a pit of, of potential failure in the future, you know, a product that doesn't launch properly issues and errors when things hit the market and you're like, well, what happened? Why didn't I know that? And then you find out that there are all these, these landmines that were covered over along the way to look good because you're part of this continuous feedback 
feedback loop. And also, guess what? They're invested and they don't want to look stupid. So Elon Musk has elevated himself or flattened himself to level five, which again is acting independently. So do whatever you think is best. You do not need to check in with me. I'm investing you with my full confidence. I believe in you. I have faith in you. And very importantly, you're going to use your judgment because I trust you to do that. But I also trust you to handle things on your own and reach out to me not to decide on things on a regular basis. Keep me updated if you want, when you need to, because you think it's the right thing to do and you have my full unwavering support. So that's what Elon Musk does. Now, there is obviously, obviously the role of the boss. There's the role of the owner. There's the role of the CEO, the role of the supervisor and so on. And that's what that authority figure, the ultimate authority figure is there for. It's to bestow trust, confidence and belief in others and be there to help the project, not control it, not to tell you how, not to look into the alternatives and come up with another alternative, which is possible. It might happen. Maybe the team is looking for alternatives or unique ideas, but there's probably smarter people closer to the product, closer to the project, closer to the materials, closer to the supply chain. There, I mean, everyone else is closer in most cases, than the leader. Now, the smaller the company, the less this applies. But as the size of the organization grows, the more that this becomes very, very powerful. And these people truly become empowered to do the right things for the product, for the project, for the customers. And that is why Elon Musk delegates at level five, where he has individuals, and definitely teams. He delegates to the team, small teams, to then act independently. And then he's there almost, not quite, almost as a spectator. And he gets pulled onto the field and to combat, to make decisions if they need a tiebreaker. But it's very, very hands-off. Now, that being said, just because he has delegated as much as he's delegated, that does not mean that he doesn't reserve the right to jump into the project to help solve some particularly nasty problem or something that he's intellectually curious about or something maybe that he feels like or even knows that he has access to or knowledge about and then he's going to jump in. Now, there's a lot more to say about this, but if you understand now, this is why you have stuck with me through this entire training, because I said, look, I'm going to tell you that Elon Musk works at a level five regarding delegation and having people work independently, but without the context of level one, two, three, or four, you would have missed out. Now, very importantly here, come in, come in very close. In the next video, I guarantee that you'll be able to think in a more structured way. You'll be able to think with more freedom and you'll be able to think more independently about the material in that next video now that you have engaged in this video and consumed it and you've thought through and you spent the time with the Rhodes Brothers. What are your thoughts? Leave a comment below. Definitely subscribe to the channel. And again, look at that next video because you will get this freedom that you never thought was possible. John S. Rhodes of the Rhodes Brothers signing off. See you in the next training. Take care.